Oftentimes when watching language videos, you'll notice that the teacher will say, this vowel is short, but this vowel is long. But to you, they both sounded the same. If that's the case, that ends today, as on this video, not only will I teach you a very easy, simple way to recognize immediately the difference between a long and a short vowel, but also be able to reproduce it yourself. Hello number ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy, the channel where we explore how to learn languages in the most fun and effective way possible. If you've watched any of my videos on classical Latin, you will have noticed that I oftentimes stress the importance of phonemic vowel length and the distinction between short vowels and long vowels in Latin. Well, one of the things I noticed by reading the comments in such videos is that oftentimes I see people telling me, I can't tell the difference, I cannot tell them apart. What's a long vowel? What is the difference with a short vowel? And besides, this doesn't just apply to Latin, but it also applies to Italian, French, Japanese, and guess what? English. So right off the bat, what are we talking about when we say short and long vowels? Whenever we study vowels in any foreign language, or even your own, there are several aspects that are covered. The production of the vowel, what parts in your mouth are involved, the quality of the vowel, the quantity of the vowel. Well, today we're only going to focus on quantity. In general, when we speak about vowel length, we're talking about the specific quantity or amount of time that you need to extend the duration of the vowel sound you're making. Let me give you an example and let's see if you can hear them. A, A, E, E, I, I, O, O, U, U. If some of these sounded very similar to your ear, here is a little trick. A. A, E, E, I, I, O, O, U, U. So as you probably noticed, it's not that the vowel is changing in its sound, it's just extending the length or duration of the sound. And you could see that practically when I made a noise and just stopped when I stopped extending. Now, clearly, if I wanted to, I could keep extending it. Ah, eh, it's just that no one does it when they speak naturally. Usually it's a ah versus a, ah, and sometimes it's even a little shorter than that. Now that's fantastic, but let's hear them applied in actual languages. An example of these in Italian is the very famous verb amare. Let me say it again. Amare, amare. Can you tell which one of these two is the long vowel? A. Ah. A, amare. So the second A is significantly longer than the first one. The first one being A, the second one being A. Of course, don't exaggerate it, don't go into amare, that's too much, but amare. Now, usually in Italian, this tends to happen when there is a syllable that receives a stress or an accent, as we say in Italian, but I don't want to go into the details of each specific language on this video. Now let's find one in Latin where, mind you, is even more important because it could become a distinguishing factor in the sense that choosing the long or short vowel will change the meaning of the word. In Latin, if you say malum with just a short a, malum, you're saying evil. But if you say malum with a long a, it means apple. And there are plenty of other situations like this in Latin, not just with the a, but also with e and e and so forth. As an interesting piece of trivia or information for you, there'll be plenty on this video, this could also be the beginning and the reason why you have an apple in the Bible. Listen. Now, the Bible was written in Hebrew. Now, here's the thing. In Hebrew, in the account of the creation and then the whole discussion about Adam and Eve, there is no apple. There is no apple. There is only a fruit, usually a round fruit, but they don't say apple. The reason why the Vulgate version of the Bible, or the Bible written in Latin, added the apple is possibly because of the fact that it kind of sounded, in the ears of medieval Latin speakers, similar to evil. But in the original text, there is no apple. Now going back to our discussion about short and long vowels. Look at, for example, words with a short A in Japanese, like ame, which means rain, and compare it to okasan, which clearly has a A sound, so long and also your aunt, in the sense of the wife of your uncle, and the word for grandmother, which are obasang and obasang, respectively. Also note that oftentimes this distinction between short and long vowels happens even if it's not reflected in spelling. 
For instance, the Japanese do spell the word sensei like this, but they usually don't pronounce it sensei. They usually say sensei. Uh, a few other examples are gakse rather than gaksei. The same situation happens with long o. They're oftentimes spelt in Japanese as o u, but no one pronounces it as o u. For instance, no one says Tokyo. They all say Tokyo. So it's o. And to see both short and long in action, let's have a look at this other city, Kyoto. Once again, can you tell which one is short and which one is long? Kyoto. So the first one is long, kyo. The second one is short, to, kyoto. In some varieties of French, depending on which area we're talking about, there is also a difference between mètre and mètre, the second one being long. Okay, but what about English? Does English have these long and short vowels? Oh, absolutely. For instance, the word far has a long r. In southern English accents, the word dance has a long R, although you don't even need to leave the UK to find different pronunciations. For example, in the north of England, they tend to pronounce it dance, so it's a short A in that case. Also, first has a long er, poor, sort. All of these are long vowels. Now, since we're talking about what happens when there is inconsistency in spelling, well, in English, we have a few of these. For example, the sound E as a long sound usually is spelled in English with double E. So you have seen, creed, but you also have the occasional exception, such as the word machine, which is also a long E sound. English pig, jet and net are all short, while game and pain are also considered long. This last example here kind of helps us understand that sometimes what's considered to be a long vowel can have a monothong version, a diphthong version, several versions. For instance, in this case, when you say game, really you're pronouncing a e. So it's two different vowels that are conjuncted together. I don't want to go too much into the details of this for now, but that happens too. So in some languages, as we have seen, the difference between short and long vowels is phonemic in the sense that it will influence or determine the meaning or the semantic field. In other words, you use the long vowel instead of the short one, you will change the meaning of what you're saying and vice versa. This happens, of course, in Latin, as we said, but it also happens in Japanese. Now, this is not always the case. For instance, in Italian, in the previous example, if someone were to say amare instead of amare, they're not changing the meaning. They just sound unnatural. And sometimes if you execute the wrong vowel, people might not understand you because the sound you're producing is not what they are familiar with. So there is a communication problem, but it's not of a phonemic nature. One thing that might be interesting, and it could be a little bit of an introduction to a sort of chapter two or dedicated video, is the fact that a language like Italian, and it's not the only one that does that, rather than using length of vowels as a phonemic distinguishing factor, so to separate the meaning between two otherwise very similar words, it will use quality. Let me give you an example, although I'll have, of course, a dedicated video. Standard Italian differentiates these two words that are otherwise spelt exactly the same with the quality of their vowels. If you pronounce it with a closed O, botte, botte, you said barrel. If you pronounce it with an open O, botte, botte, it means to get beaten. Conversely, in a similar way, but with the E versus E quality of sound, arena with a closed E, arena is a type of sand, whereas arena with an open E, arena is an amphitheater or an arena. Italian has a lot of these, so as a modern language, it relies more on quality rather than quantity, like Latin did. Okay, so how do you go about practicing this? Well, there are two things that you can do. Of course, the first one being do a lot of listening. Try to study words that are supposed to have a long vowel and then words that are supposed to have a short vowel and then try to listen to as many native recordings as possible because one of the characteristics that native speakers have when it comes to the difference between short and long vowel in their language is that they make it sound natural because one of the problems when you start working on the difference between long and short vowels and one of the most typical side effects is called over compensation, in the sense that many speakers, once they're aware of this difference, will exaggerate it. And of course, exaggerating it and overcompensating it, it's better than not doing it at all, but it does make you sound very unnatural, particularly to the ears of native speakers. Remember that a native speaker doesn't necessarily need a, that much of a difference in the extension or length or duration of a vowel to recognize it as a separate distinct entity from a short vowel, that is because they are native. So it just needs to be a bit longer. 
So listening to how they do it and try to reproduce it is the best way. The second type of exercise that you can do that is also very effective when it comes to this is to record yourself and then listen to yourself. Because one thing is listening to your voice from within your own head and one thing is listening to your voice as an outside sound from a recording. Then after you've done that a few times and you start noticing, mm, out of all of these 10 times or 10 recordings, I think this one is my best one, then compare it to native speakers. So same sound, same word pronounced by you in your best performance and pronounced by native speakers. This will help you to find maybe little small parts that, to get to a smooth, natural, realistic pronunciation. All right, but I hope that this short and simple tutorial helped you to uh, not only recognize the difference in length of vowels, but also to be able to reproduce it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining Metatron's Academy.